like many of us here, with the best I know, we've seen so many core measures in life or uh, best practices or standards. If you get them all, all of those successful organizations and corporates and individuals, all the quotes, you put it all together, you mix it in a mixer, high speed one, high frequency, all right, 240 volts, commercial. You mix them well and you make the best out of them and you taste them and you tape them and you produce a book out of them, guess what comes out? Right. What comes out? Come on. Islam 101. Okay? Really, really, really. You can come to your own own conclusion down those lines. You will come to see it yourself, young people and young men and women. You will come to see it yourself. Us, the grown-ups, we've seen something. We came to our own conclusions down the line. But you'll see it yourselves. You will come to meet successful individuals and groups and this and that. You will see what got them there are the best practices and values that are Islamic in essence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about success. Brother Mustafa at the beginning before we started he was discussing success, najah, falah. In Quran we call it, in some sense, there are many ways of looking at it. There is istikhlaf. There is yumakkin lakum fil ard. There is al aflaha al mu'minun. The Prophet والسلام, said, Qulu ya qawmi, he said, My people, say la ilaha illallah. Tuflihu. He said, Say la ilaha illallah. Know that there is only Allah and follow the code that is that comes with it. He said, Wallahi, you will succeed. And guess what happened? It did. So that's how we see it as Muslims. How to get success, purpose, mix them together, live, mujahada, how to do your best and strive and struggle. That leads you to, to take your places. This is the end. I like, like, I put in so many thoughts and ideas, some pointers, pointers, like invoking discussions and down the slides, you will see them. And after I finished them all, I said, okay, what is the best way to put it all together? And it was just 10 ayat, 10 verses, and the end of Al Imran. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahi uh, mulku samawati wal ardu Allah ala kulli shayin qadeer. Sorry about the resolution, but it does the job. In the Fihulk samawati wal ardu khilaf layl wa nahar, the ayat in the Ulu al Bab, and the Lina Turum Allah Qiyam wa Qauda, Wala Junubi, Wala Shakar Karuna, Fihulk samawati wal ardu. ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. Okay, here's a purpose. We'll come back to this, but here's a purpose. What is this all about? Allah is describing that it's there is great essence for those insightful people who think about all of this. Say Allah, you haven't created all of this in vain. Without a purpose. All of this. The heaven and the earth, the day and the night, the little and the big and the small, yesterday and tomorrow, and now, time, no time. Us, many of us are professionals. Some of us studied, for example, molecular biology. It's amazing. Cape cycle. Quantum physics. I mean, you know, someone who come like studied all and he made such a beautiful conclusion. The grand design for Stephen Hawkins, he said that quantum physics were designed as such, so we are. You know, like when, when things are split at the very first second and everything that we know it, that we know of, and resulted in some set of rules and such, quantum physics, the very tiny particles that are submolecular, subatomic, their physics uh, we're designed, there's a design behind them. They're made. So life exists on earth here now. So it's a very old story. The creation is very old. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like 13 billion years. So this has been going for so long. The one who started the process 13 billion years ago designed us so you live here today. So you have flesh and bones and breathe and oxygen and nitrogen. So there's something big surrounding and encompassing. 
So that's how you come to purpose. That's how you come to purpose. Those insightful, thoughtful people that Allah praised, think. ربنا ما خلقت هذا باط إن في اختلاف الليل والنهار إن في خلق السماوات والأرض اختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات دون الألباب. In this whole process, there is a secret. There is a design. There are signs. وفي كل شيء له آية تدل على أنه واحد. In everything, there is a sign that points you eventually to Allah. It starts with you asking the questions. Really, what is this all about? Allah says, have you thought that I just created you without a purpose? So you're discovering what is this all about? It starts with you asking the questions. All right. So go ahead and be a radical free thinker. Yes, ask the questions. What is, where are we? Did Ibrahim do that? He did that. He had his own exploration journey. So oh, stars. You worship stars. Hmm. Here's a star. But it's, yeah, okay. Let's propose, assume that I'm Portuguese. And then a star goes. Where did you go? And she's not there anymore. She's part of the process. She is not the whole process. So okay, then okay, it's the moon then. <coughs> so he made an exclusion process and came to his own conclusion. I know it from deep inside. But I wanted to do it, I wanted to come to it. And so he did. So ask the questions, and that's how you become to a purpose. Even, Why don't, even if you are the only one to ask the question. Huh? Even if you are the only one to ask the question. Yep. Yep. So what is this all about? Okay, that's how you come to purpose. Now purpose is the why. It's kind of what is it for? Why are we here? What's your purpose? Is like, you know, what's his name? Mark Twain said the most important two days in one's life is his or her birthday. And the day they know why on earth they are there. What is it they are created for? These are the most important two days. And that's someone's perspective. Someone saying it. So, <clears throat> why we're here? What are we created for? How do you design your purpose? We'll talk some more details, but here is some a few things into it. <coughs> it doesn't only come from you up to everything around you, it goes the other way. It comes from everything around you into you. The grand design. Heaven and earth, up and down, right and left, past and future. All that has to do with it. Asking the questions. The what is really, really realizing what's going on. Knowing more. I said, you're going to like disciplines when you study science or math or art or not study at all, but you'll meet people, you'll hear stories, maybe history, demographics, whatever. You'll come across so many life disciplines that will point to the same. There is something going on. The what is? What is going on? We wake up in the morning, we we'll sleep at night, we eat a drink, and we play, and he, and she, and is that really what it is? So, so much. So the more you know, the more you keep your ears to the ground, the more you will realize that what is has to do all. There's something pointing to something. <coughs> Aligning with the beauty adds to your purpose. There is, subhanAllah, some beauty in this universe. In every creation. It's not only the opposite gender. There's beauty everywhere. All right. Um, so keep an ear to that. Keep a peripheral vision for that. It, le it leads you to somewhere. The truth and the elaboration, the complexity. Knowing, really knowing. <coughs> Leads you to kind of comprehending that subhanAllah, there's something big going on. It gives you a sense of the fact that all of this creation is not haphazard. We are not haphazard. Allah did not give this supercomputer on top of our heads for no purpose. We don't come and live in somewhere and for no for no purpose. There is something behind it. 
and exploring that, asking a question. The nice part of it is, is that you have to ask a question, so you come to your own conclusions, but know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already answered it for you. This Quran answers those very original questions that you ask about. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينَ وَمِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Have we, where do we come from? These are original questions. And Allah invokes us to ask them. So we kind of, it, it gets settled deeply within us. And He answers us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran. So that's part of what's into the purpose. The, <coughs> we'll go through some set of slides that kind of gives some reminders and walking points to discuss, have some discussion about purpose, and then the same about success and, and so on. And balance. There come a time, young people, all of us, there come a time where we have to choose a path. All right? We live haphazardly, eat and drink and sleep, and enjoy luxury, lust, just eat, flesh, bones, cool, that's one choice. Or really go for a calling. Try to figure out where you fit in this beauty that Allah created. What is your purpose? <coughs> and based on those choices, that path or that path, it comes with a life code. And I mean with a life code is that there are sets of values, practices, norms, acceptables, not acceptables, do's and don'ts, missions, and so on and so forth. They come in a bundle, and each path has its own bundle. Uh, at some point of time, you have to make a choice. <clears throat> and the choice you make, whether be a person of essence and try to make a difference in this life, or be someone just like who's living and enjoying it, making that choice, you're accountable for it. I claim, based on evidence, that if you choose the path of purpose and mission, and value, you will be more achieving, you'll be more fulfilling for your purpose. You'll be more, more fulfilled, you'll be happier. You'll get more, not only with Allah's reward in the hereafter, but also on earth. You'll get more economically. You'll get more in, in terms of satisfaction with family relations. You'll be a better person for your own self also. Better health. <laughs> hmm? Better health. Health, well-being. It comes, it has many, see this is, we'll come to the end, but the formula has been like being worked on based on Islam of what we know and all of that. You will get some of the, these five things at the, at the end. Fulfillment, you will get falah, you will get khilaf and establishment on earth, better relationships, and inshallah ta'ala eventually the journey. All right, so your choices really come with just know whichever path you take will lead you somewhere, and that may be somewhere good, or it may not be. So really you have to think it through thoroughly and know what you get into. It's a choice. I found this slide, it, it helps somehow, and I'll show some things that I may disagree with, but like this slide tries to, in a simple way, shows you how to find your purpose. And that's kind of like, again, not completely we agree with this, we agree with a good part of it, but you kind of like find what you're good at, what makes you happy and you love doing, and what the world needs, and what you pay for in the job, and in the middle is your purpose. Okay. It's a nice way of looking at things, there is more input. For example, um, you know, here we kind of like in, in career, it, it's good to do what you like, you don't want to end up in something that you're kind of in a career or life choices that you don't, but sometimes life don't give you all what you want. Sometimes, driven by your purpose, you may do things that you hate for the greater cause. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like talking about you do what you love, mainly that. Sometimes your purpose, if you are, if you make your purpose guide your choices, you will get more than if you make your own inclinations guide you. Okay? Who can help me with explaining this one? To the young people. Let me say it again and then you help me. Well, you see, doing the purpose is not a simple path. 
you're gonna go through tribulation to keep it up. So your inclinations, biases, they will come in the way. They wanna try to make it easier for you and not stand up to the challenges. Is that the way to say it? Correct. Um, also, to <coughs> clarify more, you can like maybe decide, I like this, I don't like this. I don't wanna hang with them. I don't wanna go to them as just because I don't like this or that or whatever. I don't want to do this that, or I don't want to do this, this, that, because I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. But if you go run by objective, oh, my purpose is to produce, help, be helpful, deliver value. If your purpose is bigger, that will dictate where you go and where you don't. Opposite to how you like it and you don't like it. Make sense? Just like oh. liking and purpose are two different things. Correct. If you may like something, but you are not el eligible or you cannot complete it, you know, if you can think of purpose that I, I will do this, but Allah don't want you to do that and it's not benefit for you because you don't have that skill, then he may take you to another place and then you will feel like, oh, I'm better in this field. Correct. The example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah al ankabut if, if you can take Iman as a purpose, even Iman, which is the best purpose one can have, it has no challenges. There will be fitna, left and right, to, to get to the Iman. It's Correct. Not just prescribed and that's it. Correct. I mean, so, hold on. So, I, if you look at the Venn diagram that you have, which is a very good one, you see the purpose that you put the green star in the middle has got everything good. All the four areas are met in this green star. You say that you should make this a purpose, which is really good, of course. The other four tips around the green star are areas that each one of them makes three of the good areas, which is not bad to land there either. Okay, it's three out of four. Is not bad, but how do you put this as your goal, your purpose? That you 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 understand what's good for the world, what what I like, what what I can get paid for, and all this, and you can make it your. How many people think like this? That's the this, question. This presentation is quite an invitation. It's a high recommendation that all of us think that way. All right. Now, the Prophet, I'll give you an example. The Prophet was a reputable person, well doing. He's a merchant man. He's well liked in his, his tribe. He belongs to a wealthy established tribe. But he left all of those conveniences and took the heat and the inconveniences for the bigger thing. Okay? So, this is an invitation that we all do the same. And life will call you for things. Allah will call you for this. Something comes up your way. That there is, will come at you. Will, there will be a heat that no one takes but you. That is my point. It is in Surah Al Layl that Allah says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى That's the one. صدق والذين اهتدوا زدناهم هدى أو زدناهم هدى وأتنا تقوى all right when you take the first step to allah exactly that's allah right. comes to you now how do you get to this sweet spot and, and by the way the sweet spot may not really be sweet okay it may be tedious but it's right okay how do you get there you walk to allah and he shows you the places he takes you uh, uh subhanahu wa ta'ala when you strive and struggle for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will take you to the higher places. So, الَّذِينَ اَهْتَدَوْ زَادَهُمْ هُدَى You will add, subhanahu wa ta'ala, you go to Him, you take one step, He will come far more distance for you. There's a hadith down those lines. You're aware of it. Now, what's nice about this slide is a point where, um, where kind of like it's good for, for all of us to know of and try to practice. The best you know in your career, take it to your value side, okay? And the opposite. You learn something good in Islam, take it to your career and life and family, 
you know, something good with your family and, and the career, take it back to improve and enhance serving your faith and value and purpose. It's called spiral. Take from here to there. I think this is a saying, I don't think it's a hadith. But you take from here to there and from there to here. You learn something in, in uh, biochemistry, that's so good. You may apply that at your job, you may apply it in the masjid, and vice versa. You learn checks and balances from Islam, people took it for your constitutions. So you gotta take it from here to there, from there to here. You mix and you spiral, and then everything becomes nice, and everything becomes purpose. The life and the death and the livinghood and all of it becomes one. Okay? And about what you like and you don't like, there is a concept in Islam called tajabud, where you try to do things selflessly. You have to take care of yourself, you have to care for your family, you have to care for your best interest. But at the same time, when it comes to the greater purpose, you do it in a selfless way. It's called tajarub, meaning you strip, you strip your narrow interest from the process. It doesn't become like there's in the Western world, you feel it. They know these techniques very well. We hear them well. But then it's all self-centered. I see it, I like it, I love it, I get it, whatever the song is. Who is it? <laughs> there's so much about art, me, us. It's kind of like it's centered around the, the, the individual in some sense. And there is a better balance. You gotta be well-being. You gotta be uh, well-established. You have to take care of yourself. You have to have a good career. You have to have good education. But at the same time, you take this for bigger stuff. You don't do it all for the, for the self and hawa and such. You lose it, utilize it. If you build yourself, you build it so you utilize it in a better serving of the bigger purpose, the bigger cause. That's in some sense a tajabut. <coughs> Another nice way of looking at things is, uh, and it's not complete, this is not comprehensive, but it's a nice representation. Find your gift, share your gift. In the middle is a purpose. Sharing is nice. It's a nice way of looking at things, again, not comprehensive, but it's cool enough. Now, al falah Ya qawm yukulu la ilaha illallah, tuflihu, success. We finish some purpose talks. Again, it's pointers and discussions. This is not a methodical, kind of like, uh, uh, didactic presentation. Okay. Can, can, can I have a question about the previous slide. If you, not the previous, but the, the one before that. Yes. Before that, yes, this one, because you, you started the beautiful verses Alhamdulillah that uh, So the flow chart that you showed next slide is the process of the fakr. Basically, when you do tafakkur, it's basically question more, like you said. You ask question, and based on the tools that you have, your knowledge increases. And when you keep asking and keep knowledge, and you use the brand design is when you look around you. That's the brand design. And the, the what's it, what is, and the beauty, and all that. This is a process, is it not? The process of the fakr, which is, in my opinion, it's philosophy. And philosophy is the mother of knowledge, the mother of all knowledge. If you are an engineer, you can be, you get a PhD, which is a degree in philosophy, in engineering, or in medicine, or in anything, which is the same process of asking more, questioning more, and then realizing the truth. Now, so that was a good flow chart. Was not enough here. Now, now here in the end of Al Imran, Allah links this purpose discussion and orientation, links it immediately to the success and falah and the process that comes with it. Allah is praising those who are considerate, who are insightful, who are thoughtful, 
or really trying to process everything in their minds, okay? And then he talks about the now, they decided to go that path, and in the middle they ask of Allah's help, Rabbana inna sam'ana munadi yunadi li imani an aminu rabbikum fa amanna rabbana fa'kamana dunubana wa kafra'ana siyyata wa tawakana ma'ana qurah. They start praying, asking for Allah's help. Okay, and it's, it's, it's a path. There's a process, as you said, it's a path. And then with that, Allah says, with that comes difficulty and turbulences. That comes with challenges. Now you know, then you apply. When you have a purpose and you think and all that stuff, it should lead, lead you to actions. Allah says, those people are insightful and thoughtful and they're processing all of this creation, all of that stuff. They are the same people who have made struggle and strive for a great cause and because of that they were challenged, they were exiled from their places and so on. But the, the result is so sweet. <coughs> what Allah says, uh, those Allah will forgive their sins and will grant them Jannah, Jannah whatever's flowing in all directions as a reward from Allah. And Allah has the best rewards. You scroll down it's, it's a mind programming process. It tells you how to be, the best way of how to be. And it's a productive one. At the end, you scroll down to the last verse. Allah says, Ya Allah says, Oh, those who believe, you are more likely to succeed. You are more likely to get better outcomes if you were to believe and have patience and share patience and strengthen one another and be conscious and aware and, and fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do that, you have better chances to do well and do better. But I guess what I'm trying to see here there's a linkage is process or rather purpose programming that leads to results and path and eventually outcomes. But I have a question for you. Go ahead. For, this is for some, someone who has a clear vision, whose mind is working fine, and he says, this, is, this should be my purpose. But we have to be in, realistic about life. Some people are hit with depression, for example. Some people are hit with calamities like death. Some people are hit with uh, poverty. They are poor. So when you are hit with all this, your mind is not clear. What do you do then? It's a collective quote. So for example, collective quote, by that I mean, like uh, knowing more of the, of the values of Islam and knowing more of this path helps a lot. So for example, you're doing well. That's awesome. You're not doing well. I said, still was awesome in our vision, in our way of understanding things. Alright? The way of a view, we were not left alone. The nice thing about Islam, we were not completely left alone to figure it out out of nowhere. Uh, we're way on a good start. We were just left off. Allah gave us so much. So, you know Allah, he the best of the psychologists and the psychiatrists and all that stuff in their best writings. Wallah, they don't put it this way. Of course. And I'm taking responsibility. Of course. You know, uh, yeah. if we take the life of the Sahaba 13 years in Mecca, that was the best documented uh, phase of life of any group with calamities and, and adversity. And it's always <laughs> get, a, get beyond it, get beyond it. Here is a way, here is a way, until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them successful. But what I want to say is, you know, these Islamic values are the same values that are driving the success of the kuffar. It just doesn't have the word Islam on it. So I'll give you an example. Dale Carnegie, one of his best books is How to Start Living, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. You know, in the middle of the book, he gives an example of an American, uh, I think it's the 1800s. He was wrongly, uh, said to have done committed the crimes or whatever 
they want to kill the guy. You know what he says, this American guy? He knows he is wrong. He told them, you know, I am right. And what you're doing is wrong. And he was sitting on his coffin where they want to bury him or kill him. Yeah. He's ready to die, you know? And, and this is what it is. Because when there is justice and clarity and clean heart, no adversity made by others is going to uh, go against our way. That and uh, brothers and sisters, it's, you teach me these things. Again, it's, I'm just sharing the little I know. But really, it's a collective, surrounded code of behaving and value and knowing and, and deciding and all of that. There's so many terminologies. Sabr, taqwa, inna ma yataqi wa yasbir, fa inna Allah la yudhi'a ajr al muhsineen. All right? Yes. And, and what, what I'm trying to say, and, and this will help me, but there's a collective. Now, reading those prophets' stories, role models, help a lot. <coughs> reading the Quran, knowing of the Quran, referring, living, takes you places. Allah will help you with your schoolwork, it'll help you with your career, help with your family. It'll help you, inshallah, eventually with the bigger design that you're trying to do. But, but so, yeah, to, to answer the question that I asked, which you, you said it now in a very beautiful way, the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we believe, if anyone believes that the Quran is the word of Allah, then we should believe him in any statement that he makes. When Allah makes a statement and says, Indeed, with the zikr of Allah, the hearts will feel tranquil. The hearts will feel content. So that is the easy way. If you are in depression, if you are hit with anything, the one thing, read the Quran, you find the solution. You find the ease out of your hard situation. That is... See, <coughs> also, the, the, that and like Allah in Surah Al-Hajj says, مَنْ ظَنَّ أَلَّا يَنْصُرُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةَ فَلْيَمْدِ الْدِسُولِ وَالْسَمَاتِ مَلْيَقْفَعَ فَلْيَنْظَرُ but well, this means that you should have good faith in Allah. What Allah says is that if you don't think, any human, don't think that Allah is supporting you and He's in your need and He will get you through it. If you don't believe so, do the following, He says. Strangle yourself and see if that helps. What He's saying is, your only choice is that knowing that He is in your support. See, uh, يعني, for example, in Surah Muhammad, Wallahu ma'akum, wa lay yatirakum a'malakum. Wallahi us as a minority, we go through so much, and because you just like, the support system, we have to come up with it, and it's, it's a tiny one. But what I'm trying to say is like, like at the time of Muhammad, the Sahaba will come with chopped arms and blood and losses, and then Quran comes down. Allah is with you. And he will waste your, he will not waste your struggle. He will not waste what you're trying to do. So it's really the vision, knowing, knowing is important. Being literate of the, of the, of the stories will help a lot. Let me give you some examples. About Falah, this is about Falah. And if, I'll try to scroll through a little to, so we can start to finish as much possible if we could. Falah is a different size fulfillment. What do I mean? You can be a housewife and you'll be successful. Am I correct? Yes. Right. You can be a, whatever, a high-end career person and be successful. You can be a taxi cab driver and be successful. Okay? It's, for example, what was the size of the mission of Yunus? 100,000 people. Right? Yeah, you know, listen, there's a town, 100,000 people. Just show me what you can do. Yeah, I can do it. He fled. No, not, at, not before he tried. He tried with that first. Anyway, fine. <laughs> but if it was 100,000 people, yeah. he fled. He learned his lesson. La ilaha illa an subhanak inni kuntum al-dhalimeen. He gets saved. He tries again. But the point here is that his mission was that town. What was the struggle of Yaqub? He said, Carp with children. This is the struggle. Do we know of anything else Yaqub had to do in the Quran? Did he have to go and open uh, conquer lands? 
Hated him. How about the struggle of Yusuf? Yusuf had to go endure the difficulty of his thick hearted brothers and whoever family. And then he had to be a good government leader. This was his challenge, his test. Okay. I guess you get the point. Everybody has their sized task, their sized calling. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Ibrahim alayhi wafa, who is sitting now uh, in the seventh heaven, working on Dahrahu al Bayt al Mahmur, was a different story. Ibrahim was so cosmo, kind of whatever you want to call it. He was over universal, he was so global. And it's nice to know that Ibrahim, one of the things I heard about, like what got him to that rank, being so the closest to Allah just yet after Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, in Isra al Mi'raj, Muhammad surpassed him. But he's in that rank for a prayer he prayed. I, I heard, I think I read, I hope it's authentic. It says, Rabbighfir warham wa anta arham wa That Allah forgive everything, everyone. Allah have mercy on everything and everybody, globally, universally, just everything. So, that's what I But Allah said that he, he will make <coughs> an Imam for mankind. That's a great value. That's a great honor. Imam. About that, we'll come to it in a few slides, but وَإِذَا اَبْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ Now there will be some, we'll come to character and attributes building. But for example, Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him some attributes with Muluk. He tested him with the Ibrahim, Rabbuhu bi kalimatin, fa'atamahun, qali ibn ja'ruk min nasi imama. Allah gave a test for Ibrahim with some attributes for him to develop. Yeah. And when he got them, when he conquered them by practice and by self improvement, when he conquered them, Allah put him in that position where he's, or Allah gave him that mission of being imam and ja'ruk min nasi imama. But also the word Ummah means like I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you when I was talking. I meant when you are surrounded by people who are completely thinking in one way, all one heart on it, and you come out and say something different, that's what Ibrahim did. And I saw this time. How much time do you have? How much time do you have? Huh? Five minutes? Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get the hand of it. Dawood was a king, alayhi salatu wasalam. So was Sulaiman. He was a Nabi and a king. So the point is, every person has their size, their load to, to, to bear. So it's not the one size, not everybody has to be an Imam of a Muslim. And not everybody has to be a donor for whatever. Allah will give you your mission. Just do the best with it. And that's what's awesome. <coughs> we mentioned the importance of al amal al salihu ikhlasun wa itqan al rather in the ladin amal al salihat amal wa amal salih. There's no no faith without action. Period. Okay. Uh, you cannot be well-hearted and all and just don't act upon it. The Sahab who came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, "Aslahat mu'min al haqqa wa aslahat ala arsha Rabbi bariza wa ana wa an so on and so forth." He said. <laughs> when you know something, you gotta act on it. You gotta put it in, you, you gotta put your design on what you know. And that's what gets your results. Otherwise, it's empty words. It's worthless. Just just uh, verbal and whatever, just knowing without action is, is doesn't take us anywhere. <laughs> Doing something right, you have to have pure intention. And this is very important, like, to, to focus on this. It's important to have pure intention. This, there are some nice quotes here. We may not be able to go through all of them, but... Wallahi, yani, what's the highest guilt or sin or mistake someone can make? Shirk billah. Shirk billah. If you do things for something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not worth it. Okay? If you do it to show off, or you do it to gain and gain just in a narrow interest way, that's worthless. And it's counterproductive, not only for you, for everything around you. These are about intentions, some quotes. 
I'll give you examples, we'll keep giving them. Allah by the end of Surah Al-Kahf says, Qul hal nabiyukum bil akhsarina amala. Allah says by the end of Al-Kahf, let me tell you about those who are the most ever <coughs> worst losers. Losing or losers. Alladheena dhalla sa'ayun fi hayat al-dunya. Allah mehtubuna al-musra. The worst losers, Allah says, in Surah Al-Kahf, so the worst losers are those who spend all their life doing well, thinking they are doing well, while they are wasting their energy. Okay? And the Prophet gave more examples. He said, there'll be a habib, and he's thrown in hell because he did not make effort for the sake of Allah. And he said it, so he's, he did it, so he's, he said that he's a habib. The same for a good donor, the same for a mujahid. If we do things for not pure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a core now, this is big. If we do things that are not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the young men made it. When did that happen? They escaped. But if we don't, it just, it's a waste of energy. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big threat to home. Convictions dictate the details. There's a method to for like where your purpose dictates the details. At the beginning of life, you'll be searching for goals and what to do and who you are and what you're best at and what career and what education and all that. And that, that will take you places. But then what you figure out, what's your calling in life, it dictates the rest. It dicts, if you go by big goal, it'll give you, and that's kind of like goal setting. That's a dua, as a matter of fact. It, it helps dictate the details better. When you look far, the road becomes easier. I mean, technique-wise, and that's funny, but that's also neurophysiology. I mean, when you, when you ride a car, if you don't look at every corner, you get ahead. it. When you look far down the road, to stay with, between the lanes, you don't look at the truck and the small bicycle next to you. You look far and you drive because your mind will dictate on your arms where to go. That's the only demand. Women look down at the corners. <laughs> uh, no I'm serious, this is a study that was done. There is a difference between men driving and women driving. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I have five women at home, okay? What do you think I just... <laughs> have an extra bed or something? Brother is not going home? I have no idea, <laughs> but uh, there are differences between. Give him five hours. Okay, they know colors better, they know facial details better, they know emotions better. That I know. There are variances, but. Uh, That's the best. Okay, I don't know if anyone who doesn't know left from right. It's just, I don't. It's just a method of, of concentration. They made a study. I mean. Who, uh, <laughs> the man uh, development wise is more towards geometry and orientation and navigation than women. This is well known. Yeah. Right? And she's better at so many other stuff. Yes. But in terms of navigation and stuff, GPS, we have a better magnetic stuff. Or at least different, not not, not <laughs> better, but different. This is but, uh, listen, <laughs> difficult one. They can navigate, but more complex than we yeah. can. They navigate emotions and better than we do. But so, so, so the point is, when, when you have bigger goals, when you make du'a, you're dictating, this helps when you put far, far goals, it dictates the details, it makes it easier for you. All right. Of course. So the reverse method helps helps a lot. Look far. More factors. We spoke about the character, and now Ibrahim was tested or was requested to acquire some attributes, and then some of us said those in uh, those attributes were detailed, like in Muslimin al Muslimin al Muslimat, and so on and so forth. P two verses in Fajrat, I think, or somewhere else. <laughs> I used to know them well, but features or attributes can be practiced and you can go places with it. Do I have more time or I'm done? Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, about this now, we put so much, I was raised in a way where you have to be a superhero to make things work. I learned through the life that you gotta put some accountability on your team, your family, on the others. You gotta give that skill of asking the others to do their accountability too. And it could be a structure issue if you're in an organization or in a team or, it could be a structure issue. So it's not always, always that we were, I don't know, but that's my raise and, and 
my conditions were like you have to kind of become almost yeah almost a prophet yeah you have to know it all and be it all and that's good up to a certain limit beyond that it's about the others and about the structure and the process it's not all you i learned that the hard way <coughs> seeing through and the perspective things may not be what they look like the prophet praised those who uh, kind of see things different I think the hadith uh, I forgot the ladina yathbutuna ila manu nas no hadith and when everybody goes wrong you stay right that's good stay on the path yeah. right, seeing through having a different perspective the prophet told about that story of the mom whom her nursing child spoke one of the few and she's like she saw a wealthy strong person coming along with his caravan and the mom said yeah allah make my child like this man he's all looking good and he's powerful the child was nursing he lifted his head and said oh allah just don't listen to him don't make me like him so she was in wonder and awe, and a little while after, the, there was a servant, a female servant being hit by her family, by her owners or whatever, <coughs> bosses or whatever you want to call it. She was being hit, humiliated. Oh, you have stolen, you have made mistakes, you are wrong, and they were being hit. She, they're hitting her, she's humiliated, she's not in a good shape. So the mom says, oh Allah, don't make my child like this woman. The child lifts his head and says, Ya Allah, don't listen to her. Make me like this woman. So the mom says, what's wrong with you? She said, well, he is an oppressor and she is oppressed. Okay. They were, everybody's wrong about that man and everybody's wrong about this woman. And the Prophet said, Rubba ash'at ahbar yusha'b al abwaab. La waqsam ala Allah la barra. So we have to see things a little different sometimes. And knowing, knowing, and seeing through matters a lot. There's really a few more things in there. So I'm able to finish it. Well, just a couple of